Good Oath 4 is packed with long-awaited, exciting new features. It takes Good Oath from a solid contender among popular game engines to an excellent choice for both 2D and 3D game development. Over the past five years, Godot has been steadily growing in popularity for its sleek UI, its lightness, and its user-friendly scripting language. With version 4, Godot enters a new age and a category of its own as the game engine that packs the most features at the smallest size. It does that without sacrificing performance, all while remaining free and open source forever. Let's jump in for a complete breakdown of everything that's new in Godot 4. We'll look at 3D, 2D, visual effects, scripting, physics, UI, text, internationalization, the improved editor, AI navigation, extended reality, networking, audio, animation, and supported platforms. As you can see, there's a ton to cover, so let's get started. This video is sponsored by our Godot courses. To celebrate the release of Godot 4.0, we're running a limited time sale. You can get everything at 50% off until March 8th, 2023. Our courses currently focus on Godot 3.5, but if you buy now, you'll get the Godot 4 update in 2023 at no extra cost. Starting from scratch? No problem. Learn to code from zero will teach you how to code games from the ground up. You're an experienced Godot dev? Our knowledge-based Godot Node Essentials will help you take your skills to the next level. This is a great opportunity to level up your skills with Godot. You'll find a link to the sale in the video description. Topping the list of exciting upgrades is, of course, the new Vulkan-based rendering engine for mid- and high-end devices. With this new engine, you'll get higher quality lighting, much cleaner shadows, and many more improvements, as we'll see in a moment. For low-end devices and mobile platforms, the developers made a new OpenGL-based rendering engine. It already has great support for 2D games and limited 3D support in this release. OpenGL shadows, reflection probes, and glow will be added in a future update. Before we look at rendering, note that support for Direct 3D 12 is coming in the next release for better compatibility with Windows and Xbox. Do 4 introduces new global illumination technologies for interiors and outdoor environments. For large open worlds, SDFGI, or Assigned Distance Field Global Illumination, is a new real-time technique designed to easily light open environments, even on mid-range hardware. For small and medium environments, the Voxel GI node provides high-quality real-time global illumination and works especially well for interiors. You can still use light maps to pre-render lighting and shadows on low-end devices. Light map baking now uses the graphics card for much faster rendering. Shadows didn't look very good in Godot 3. This is not the case anymore. Shadow rendering was rethought from scratch to offer a much better look and more granularity to balance performance and quality. There's a new screen space ambient occlusion algorithm that offers both higher quality and better performance. You can use SSIL or screen space indirect lighting to enhance dark areas and indirect lighting with global illumination. Also, you can now switch on physical light units to use standard camera settings to control brightness. Godot 4 gives you many tools to improve rendering performance. Godot 3.5 came with nodes to do manual occlusion culling. It's a technique to avoid rendering models hidden behind other geometry that works great in cityscapes and other scenes packed with objects hiding each other. Godot 4 adds a powerful algorithm that'll scan your scene and do occlusion culling for you. For wide open exteriors, occlusion culling doesn't work as well because few objects overlap. There, you can leverage the new automatic generation of mesh LOD, which stands for level of detail, or use manual HLODs with full control over visibility ranges. In addition, you can enjoy AMD's Fidelity FX scaling technology, also known as FSR1. It dynamically renders the game at a lower resolution and upscales the result to keep the game running smoothly. The new Godot 4 release brings a ton of new tools for 2D game development. One of the biggest changes is the new tileset and tilemap editor. It was rebuilt from scratch to answer the community's request to extend the feature set and offer a complete level design solution for 2D games. 
The new tilemap editor includes layers, a new terrain autotiling system to paint large areas quickly, a randomized painting system to scatter plants, rocks, and other props, and a selection tool to copy, stamp, and save selections to reuse later. It also offers fine control over collisions, navigation, pivot points, and many more properties of tiles. With the new scene placement feature, you can even add characters, chests, and other interactive scenes in grid cells. But my favorite addition is that the new editor will automatically expand your tile set textures under the hood and prevent gaps from appearing between tiles. This is a pain with many game engines, including Godot 3, but with Godot 4, not anymore. The new tileset editor comes with a bit of a learning curve because, let's face it, it's a complete departure from Godot 3, but we found it's well worth the investment. What you get is a complete, highly versatile level editing program in the engine. Of course, future UX refinements are on the roadmap to make it more intuitive based on user feedback. Another exciting 2D feature is the new Canvas Group node. There are many cases where you want to merge multiple sprites, like when making a cutout character transparent. It's now trivial. Just add a canvas group node as the parent of a bunch of sprites, and they will all render as a single image. You can now also use any 2D element as a mask with the new Clip Children property. On the lighting front, 2D got its fair share of improvements too, with directional 2D lights and shadows. Plus, when using normal maps to add depth to your 2D graphics, you can control the light's elevation for a 3D feel. In terms of performance, you will find it much greater than before when using multiple light sources. Finally, you can now use 2D multi-sample anti-aliasing for improved image quality. Shader support and visual effects both got a lot of love. Volumetric fog and hand-placed fog volumes are now available to enhance scenes globally or in specific areas. Your outdoor environments will greatly benefit from sky shaders, which allow you to dynamically affect the scene's lighting with your own custom effects. They also affect volumetric fog. At last, we have decals. You can now project materials on other surfaces for greater visual variety in your game levels. GPU-based particles have improved. They now support attractors, collisions, and creating trails that can interact with the game world. The shader language received support for structs, uniform arrays, fragmental light varyings, preprocessor macros, and shader includes. In short, if you don't speak shader, coding advanced and complex effects has just become much easier. For effects that apply to the whole game world, for example, Wind direction or wetness level, you can now share global values across materials. All these features directly benefit the visual shader editor, which looks and feels nicer. Many new noise texture generation options were added in 4.0. They're really useful for shaders and procedural content generation. Last but not least, Godot now supports and uses compute shaders. These special shaders allow you to accelerate some algorithms using the graphics card. Let's move on to scripting, an area that got tons of improvements. Firstly, Godot 4 still allows you to script using its own language, GDScript or C Sharp. The team removed the visual scripting language as they felt it needed to be rethought from scratch. Given a solid proposal, the door is open to adding a new visual scripting tool in the future. Godot's GDScript programming language now offers greater performance, especially when using types. Some users reported it to be roughly twice as fast in their projects. The typing system is more robust, with the ability to type arrays, there is also way less use of strings, which makes your code a lot more reliable. Cherry on the cake? Those awful cyclic dependency errors are no more. It makes working with types a lot more pleasant. Error reporting improved considerably with the compiler's ability to report many errors simultaneously. The developers added more explicit error messages and new warnings for common mistakes. Functions and signals are now first class, meaning you can directly reference them. You can write function literals, also known as lambdas, which greatly help to limit spreading your code around files. I find it especially helpful when connecting signals. One of the changes I like the most is the generation of documentation pages from your code comments. 
You can write helpful comments in your code to explain how it works, and the engine will add them to the built-in code reference. This saves time and effort by eliminating the need to write separate documentation outside your code base. You can name variables and functions using characters from non-Latin alphabets, such as Japanese, Chinese, or Hindi. With this feature, programmers can use the most natural language in their code, making it easier to read and maintain. There is much more to talk about, like the new map, filter, or reduce methods on arrays, and the new setters and getters. But we will make a video dedicated to everything new in GDScript. This release brings many improvements to C Sharp integration, including support for modern C Sharp features and .NET. So instead of the mono runtime, Godot 4 uses .NET 6. Type support has been improved with the introduction of the engine's variant type, making types more focused throughout the API. Signals are now accessible using the C Sharp event syntax, and you can also use C Sharp lambdas with Godot's API. Godot 4 uses source code generation at compile time instead of runtime code reflection to call engine functions. This results in improved performance and error reporting. Some features still need to be added but are already being worked on. These include mobile and web support. In Godot 4.0, C Sharp only works on desktop platforms. The Godot team has been hard at work improving their game-specific physics engine, Godot Physics, resulting in a much welcome increase in simulation stability. In our Godot 4 tests, everything felt a lot more predictable and reliable. This effort started with Godot 3.5, but Godot 4.0 refines physics further. Godot Physics now supports cylinders, height maps, and soft body shapes. Heightmap support is a great feature for Terrain plugins, and soft bodies will allow you to simulate all sorts of clothing. Performance-wise, the physics engine now supports multi-threading, which you can enable in the project settings. It works best when you have separate clumps of physics bodies around the game world. In those situations, it can double or even triple the physics simulation speed depending on the scene and the number of CPU cores. Another major improvement is the simplified physics nodes system. The new character body, formerly kinematic body, has much clearer functions and properties, resulting in shorter and simpler code. The physics layers and masks work more intuitively. Everything is generally easier to learn and use. There are still known issues that the team plans to address over the following months. In particular, while the physics engine now supports multi-threading and offers fine performance, there's still room for more optimizations. This is a good time to talk about performance in Godot 4.0. The focus for this release has been on rewriting the core of the engine to work for the modern era. Godot's code base was well over a decade old and needed a complete makeover. This was an absolutely massive undertaking. The code is now a lot cleaner, with a lot more automated testing to help prevent regressions. The engine rewrite sets the necessary foundations to add features and push the technology moving forward, but it took a lot of time. As a result, performance is not where the team wants it to be yet. However, please note that performance and polishing are top priorities on Godot 4's roadmap. The team is already working on a benchmark suite to track performance changes during development. It will be publicly available and show you how performance improves over time. Don't get me wrong, there has been work on performance as we saw with GDScript, multi-threaded physics, and rendering optimization features, but they will primarily benefit complex projects at this stage. In simple projects, you may not see much difference yet. Also, you'll find greatly improved performance measurement tools, such as the new Visual Profiler, which lets you measure graphics rendering performance. While Godot provides scripting languages for fast prototyping, sometimes we need to use more powerful and lower level languages like C, C++, or Rust to get the best performance. With the GD extension technology, you can use these high performance languages without recompiling the engine. GD Extension is the successor to GD Native, the former high performance language integration technology in Godot 3. GD Extension was rewritten from scratch to offer a better developer experience, tighter integration into the engine, and almost as much control as when creating engine plugins. 
The technology supports exposing your high-performance code as new nodes in the editor. Help pages are also automatically generated and integrated into the editor based on your code. This feature is still experimental. It currently lacks documentation, so it's more of a tool for experienced developers and game studios at the moment. There are plans to make it more accessible to solo developers and indies moving forward. Next on the list is UI creation. Developers improved Godot's built-in user interface framework for a more efficient workflow. You can now create apps with multiple windows, which Godot itself uses to let you undock parts of the interface. This paves the way for full multi-monitor support moving forward. There are also major improvements to text rendering. Font collections and open type variable fonts allow users to pack many font variations in a single file like bold, italics, or fonts with different weights. Open type features bring you text ligatures and improve support for languages like Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. You now have more control over text wrapping and the developers improved aspects such as trimming text that's going out of interfaces. You can reuse these editor features in your own apps. With multi-channel sign distance field over sampling, you'll get crisp text at any resolution. You'll notice the text stays sharp when zooming in and out in the visual shader editor, for example. You have much more intuitive editing options for user interface nodes, which makes interface creation clearer and easier. The simplified inspector filters properties that matter depending on your selection. You'll also notice a new visual widget for picking layout options, which quickly resizes selected UI components. You can now use fonts installed on your computer by listing their names in the editor. Oh, and a cool change is that font size can finally be set on each label, so you don't need to create a new font resource every time the text size needs to change. In Godot 3.5, the developers added a new theme editor to better control how your interfaces look. In case you missed it, it's an important feature to be aware of as it makes your work much easier. The engine now offers advanced localization features such as bi-directional text, including for Arabic and more. The editor is a great example of that as it's fully functional with languages that require right-to-left text. This makes Godot one of the few game engines out there that'll work great for players worldwide. For translations, the editor can now generate portable object template or POT translation files directly from your project's scenes and scripts. It makes it easy for translators to work with the game's content and produce complete translations. If you need to work with other kind of translation files, you can also hook into that system and add your own parser. On top of that, the translation system is now context-aware. It allows you to have multiple translations of the same string depending on the context. Finally, the system also supports plurals to write words properly depending on the quantity. Godot 4.0 introduces a refined editor with dozens of quality of life improvements. First, the editor greatly benefits from the new bidirectional text support and text rendering. It works and looks better in every language. There's a new import window that gives you fine control over imported 2D and 3D assets. File imports are much faster as they now support multi-threading. You can finally export your custom resource types from your scripts and directly reference nodes in the inspector, saving you time during development. When using a version control system, resource IDs had a tendency to change too often in scenes and muddy the list of changes. These changes are now more stable. Almost all resources use unique identifiers instead of file paths in files, which also results in way fewer merge conflicts. There is a new editing experience for arrays, dictionaries, and complex resources in the inspector, complete with pagination. Also, from your scripts, you can use annotations to draw sections and organize properties in the inspector. The editor theme was thoroughly tweaked to look more modern and easy on the eyes. You can go to Editor, Editor Settings to find many theme options to customize the look and feel of the interface. The new History dock shows your undo and redo history and allows you to jump to any step very quickly. The undo history now works per scene, so pressing Ctrl Z will stick to the active scene. 
The scene dock offers new ways to search and filter notes quickly, which is a big time saver for large scenes. Gdo 4 comes with new color pickers with different picker shapes, color modes, and the ability to quickly update your project's color palette, which is essential for artists to work fast. The script editor has greatly improved syntax highlighting, font ligatures for nicer text, and multiple cursor support, making it more efficient to work with. You'll notice new icons indicating when you override a function in the margin. Clicking it will take you to the parent implementation or the documentation if it's a built-in function. You can now edit various text-based data files in the script editor, such as JSON, YAML, and other text files. Godot 4.0 builds upon several features that were ported to Godot 3.5. You can now mark many nodes as unique in the scene at once. This allows you to access nodes in scripts without writing their full paths, and they're cached, so performance is much better. You can finally get these nodes by typing just a person sign, followed by the node's unique name. Also, everything supports drag and drop to the script editor. You can control click and drag multiple nodes to create on-ready variables, or just click and drag nodes or files onto the script editor to get their path. There's a convenient widget to test lighting and sky settings in 3D, allowing you to quickly add sunlight and basic environment settings to scenes. Finally, the new Movie Maker mode allows you to render scenes frame by frame at the maximum quality settings to make videos or trailer footage using the engine. Godot can render frames to a compressed AVI video or as a sequence of PNG images for lossless rendering. AI navigation used to be a limiting aspect for Godot, but this isn't the case anymore. Godot 4 boasts a powerful real-time pathfinding and navigation system, which was backported to Godot 3.5. With this system, AIs can easily find and follow the player or navigate to any point of interest in 2D and 3D scenes. The navigation system is more efficient than it used to be since it uses a low-level server pattern instead of nodes. On top of navigating around static obstacles, it now supports moving obstacles. You can rebake navigation meshes at runtime to dynamically open and close parts of a level. And most importantly, you can make agents cross over gaps, walk over moving platforms, climb ladders, and more using navigation link nodes. This is new in Godot 4. Note that key workflow improvements and performance optimizations are already planned for the next updates so the developers marked the current API as experimental. It means that the name of functions or some aspects of how the system works might change in the next releases. Here is a taste of what's coming with improved avoidance algorithms that support complex scenarios. In version 4.0, OpenXR is now embedded in the engine score, so you no longer need a plugin to run XR games. It provides support for all major PC headsets that work through SteamVR on Windows and Linux, the Oculus on Windows, and Monado on Linux. With the plugin, you get full support for the MetaQuest and Pico 4 VR headsets, which run on Android. You can also use the Magic Leap 2 headset, OpenXR compliant HTC headsets, and the new Lynx R1 AR headset, though support for these is still being fine-tuned. The engine supports WebXR to make extended reality games and applications that run in web browsers. It also now implements OpenXR Action Maps, which are a necessary input mapping system specific to extended reality. Finally, Godot officially provides a library of time-saving components to move around in virtual reality, display hands that synchronize with the player's controllers, grab objects, and much more. It's called Godot XR Tools, and it makes it really fast to prototype VR games in Godot. You can start from the official project template, add components from the library, and it just works. It is frequently getting new features, so be sure to check it out if you make XR projects. Godot 4.0 brings exciting new multiplayer features. The Remote Procedure Calls, or RPC, API has been simplified with a more consistent syntax and less fluff. The developers also improved the code's performance. No-code scene replication is now available out of the box, making it easier to create multiplayer games in some scenarios. You can run Godot Headless to test server code on any computer, making the development process more efficient. It is now available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. 
headless builds with placeholder assets are also available. They can greatly reduce memory and processing footprint for server builds. This release includes many requested networking features like setting timeouts and limiting network bandwidth. This area lacked documentation at the time of recording, but it felt powerful and simpler than Godot 3 system. Godot 4.0 brings welcome refinements to the audio side of the engine. The team did a lot of cleanups to eliminate unwanted popping sounds and artifacts. Audio tracks now blend automatically when using animation trees, allowing you to use audio playback tracks in animation trees. You can finally play and stack the same sound from a single audio node. There are new import options to set the looping points of music with BPM aware trimming. You can also use the new text to speech functions for accessibility purposes. These last two features were initially developed for Godot 4 and backported to Godot 3.5. Animation got its fair share of improvements that'll make your life much easier. Godot 4 brings animation retargeting for your 3D characters. It allows you to reuse animations even when characters have different proportions, making it possible to use animations from online libraries like Mixamo. It's an excellent tool to save time-consuming animation work and to leverage motion capture data. On the editor's side, you can now switch between rotation modes and change the rotation axis order for fine control over object rotations. The animation graph editor interface also got a facelift. You can now select and edit multiple curves simultaneously, hide individual tracks, and more. It'll make it easier to create complex animations in Godot. Animations used to be stored as individual resources or in animation player nodes. Godot 4 uses animation libraries instead to reuse animations more efficiently throughout your projects. Animations now support compression, which makes disk and memory usage 5 to 10 times smaller. You can turn on compression using the import window. Also, position, rotation, and scale are now separate properties on skeletons instead of being combined into a single transform animation track. The animation blending system got a rewrite in Godot 4. It's now much more predictable, leading to nicer looking animation transitions. The animation tree editor got many improvements to set up advanced animation graphs. You can use the sync property with blend spaces and node transitions. You can use curves in node transitions and state machine crossfades to fine tune the animation blending. And one shot, transition, and state machine nodes can now restart animations much more easily. Animation state machines can teleport to any unreachable state now, giving you more freedom in your code. And finally, in animation state machines, you can write expressions to define advanced transition conditions. Lastly, Godot 4 replaces the old tween node with a new tween system. It no longer uses nodes and its functions were redesigned, making tween animations much easier and faster to set up. This feature was backported to Godot 3.5 where it coexists with the old tween node. What about supported platforms, you might ask? The Godot editor runs natively on Windows, macOS, and Linux, allowing you to build games on your preferred operating system. It also now supports Android tablets, making it an affordable and accessible option for people to do game dev worldwide. It's an excellent option for kids who want to learn to code and create games. On top of that, the editor runs in web browsers, which is perfect for schools as teachers can deploy it quickly in the classroom. It runs entirely locally on the student's machine and doesn't collect any data. Godot 4 also exports games to all the platforms you'd expect, including Windows, macOS, and Linux, as well as mobile platforms like Android and iOS. HTML5 export makes it possible to create browser-based games and applications. Console support is also in the works by third parties, as console manufacturers don't allow open sourcing their code. It's often misunderstood as Godot being unable to make console games. However, there are several commercial Godot games out for the Nintendo Switch, and we hope to see many more made with Godot 4. This sums up the most prominent new features of Godot 4.0. If there's a specific feature for which you'd like a more detailed overview, please let us know in the comments or join our Discord community. Remember that all our courses are 50% off until March 8th, 2023. 
From here on, we'll make good O4 resources, so now is the time to get a head start with our existing courses. You will get a free upgrade to the good O4 remakes. If you're a developer, check out Node Essentials. It's a practical good O cookbook to keep at hand. If you're just getting started with game dev, learn to code from zero is for you. We have more videos coming, so be sure to subscribe to not miss out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.